sunrise and sunset, promise and fulfillment, birth and death. The whole drama of life is written in the sands of time. The American Broadcasting Company presents another in a series of dramatic programs, The Clock. The world is run by the hands of time. From the harried commuter who gulps his coffee in the morning, then dashes for the 8.15, to the captain of a plane who must maintain his rigid flight schedule, time is the all-important thing. When a child is born, the family anxiously inquires as to the hour. When a criminal stands before the bar of justice, his sentence is measured in years. Yes, the clock is one of the standards by which we live and die. For even death never fails to make an appearance when the time is right. Ever been to Enrico's Beauty Salon? It's one of the fanciest in town. Tell your wife to drop in sometime when she's looking for a shampoo set and a manicure and ask for Daisy. I'm good with my fingers. And I guarantee my upsweep is sure to please. Oh, you have a drink? No? Well, I guess I'll have one alone. I'm not much of a drinker, you know. I only have a nip every now and then just to be sociable. But you'll excuse me if I wet my whistle once or twice when I'm talking. My story's so awfully long. So, there's mud in your eye down the hatch. Ah, that was good. Where was I? Oh, Enrico's. Well, I've been working there for quite a while. And it certainly is an interesting way to make a living. You meet all kinds of women. Most of them rich. And they like to chew the fat and gossip with the girl who does their hair. <laughs> oh, well, how much longer, Daisy? About half an hour, Mrs. Whitty. If you only knew how I detest these permanents. You sit under this vile contraption for ages with your head looking like one of the Gorgons, and before you realize it, you've killed an entire afternoon. Who's Gorgon, Mrs. Whitty? Someone I know. <laughs> oh, she's a figure in mythology, Daisy. Oh. She had live snakes on her head instead of hair. Oh, she better not come in here to get a page, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Daisy, you're refreshing. I'd rather talk to you than any other woman I know. Oh. You're so frank, so honest. When you compliment me about my appearance, I never take it as idle flattery. Oh, you shouldn't, Mrs. Whitty. I always tell the truth. <laughs> How do you think I've been uh, looking these days? Just as young as ever, Mrs. Whitty. <laughs> oh. oh, you'd be amazed if I told you how old I was. <laughs> Did you know I'm close to 50? Uh, to, uh, 44? You don't look a day over 30. Oh, Daisy. It's the truth. Well, I know one thing... Even if I did look my age, I wouldn't be afraid to admit it. I'm not like some women. Take Eve Taylor, for instance. She still thinks she's 25. If her husband had an idea of how she was carrying on, he... Oh, Daisy, um, you, uh, don't know Eve Taylor, do you? Oh, no, ma'am. Well, <laughs> even if you did, you're not the gossiping kind. Neither am I, for that matter. But Eve's behavior is disgraceful. Imagine a woman of 45 who's been married for 20 years carrying on with one of those young dancing instructors half her age. My goodness. Everyone knows but her husband. And heaven help her as he finds out. Why, he'd divorce her so fast it would make her head swim and he'd cut her off without a cent. She's taking an awful chance. And all for Maurice. That's his name. Maurice. Oh, <laughs> And she thinks he loves her. <laughs> Can you imagine, Daisy? Aren't some women just absolute fools? Oh. <laughs> of course, she's perfectly safe until her husband catches her. And I guess he'll never find out. No. Some men are blind, Daisy. <laughs> absolutely blind. Uh, don't you agree with me? Oh, sure. Oh, well, why are you looking at me that way? What are you thinking of, Daisy? Nothing, Mrs. Whitty. Nothing important. You'll be sure to keep what I've just told you to yourself. Oh, you can trust me, Mrs. Whitty. I wouldn't give Mrs. Taylor away any more than you would. Oh. 
Well, she kept on talking and talking, and I kept on listening, and pretty soon I knew more about Mrs. Taylor's love affair than she did herself. Of course, Mrs. Whitty didn't know, but Mrs. Taylor was one of our customers, too. Irma usually did her hair. She never came into the shop, though. She always called and had Irma come over to her fancy Fifth Avenue home, and she tipped like crazy. Oh, uh, would you pass me that glass, please? Thanks a lot. Funny how your mouth gets dry when you talk so much. Ooh. Well, anyway, following day, Irma got a call from Mrs. Taylor, and I asked her to let me go instead. I told her I'd give her the tip, but I said I was dying to see the inside of Mrs. Taylor's home after all I'd heard about it. Yes? My name is Daisy, Mrs. Taylor. I'm from Enrico's. I asked for Irma. Irma's sick. But I'm sure you'll like my work. Uh, what do you have, Mrs. Taylor? Shampoo and a set? Yes. Oh, you've got lovely hair. It'll be easy to work with. Never mind the compliments. Just get it finished. I have an appointment at five. Cocktails for two? Are you being impertinent by any chance? Oh, no, ma'am. It's just that cocktails always seem to go good after a dancing lesson. Just what do you mean by that? Just wait till I set your hair for you, Mrs. Taylor. He'll adore it. Who will? Maurice. He's awfully cute. <laughs> I don't know anybody by that name. You don't? Really? Oh, well, let me describe him for you. He's about 5'11", with nice-looking teeth and slick, dark hair. He likes to rumba and do the tango, and I also hear he likes the girls. Just what do you want, young lady? You can call me Daisy. What are you trying to get out of me? Do you like money, Mrs. Taylor? I love it. I like to feel it and crease it in my hands. But most of all, I like to fold it and put it in my pocketbook. Are you trying to blackmail me? Mr. Taylor works in Wall Street, doesn't he? He deals in bonds. If I got nothing else to do tomorrow, maybe I'll run down to his office and make an investment. How much do you want? How much have you got? Or I should say, uh, how much can you spare? I'll give you a hundred dollars if you forget you ever heard of Maurice. A hundred dollars? Well, that's not much. Everything's so inflated these days, you can't get far with a hundred bucks. Two hundred. And that's the limit. I'll take a thousand, Mrs. Taylor, in cash. This is outrageous. Is it? I ought to have you jailed. When will I get the money, Mrs. Taylor? Tomorrow. See how easy it was? My goodness, it was a cinch. All I had to do was listen in to the ladies' conversation when I did their hair, and I could make myself some tin money on the side. Did I do it some more? Oh, sure. It worked three times in a row. I got a Persian lamb and a cocktail watch, and everything was fine. Oh, my goodness, how thirsty you get when you talk like this. I, I wonder if... I... Oh, thanks. Just a, just a wee drop more. <laughs> my grandpa must have been a colonel from Kentucky. I like my bourbon neat. <laughs> hmm? What, what, what's that? Oh, oh, yeah, the, the story. So, as I was telling you, it worked three times in a row. But the fourth time was when my career really began. You say she's running around with a man named Nicky Gates? If Charlotte's father ever found out my dear, he'd kill him. Why, Mrs. Whitty? Well, she's so young. And this, uh, this Nicky person has an unsavory reputation. Oh. Her father, you know, is an ex-police inspector who retired after making a fortune in oil out west. He's very hot-headed, and I hear he still carries a gun. Oh. If this Mr. Gates ever gave himself away, it would just be too bad. But the girl isn't married. Oh, no. No, she's only a child. Her father wouldn't be angry with his daughter. He'd just take it out on the man. Nicky Gates. What business is he in, Mrs. Whitty? Oh, I understand he does uh, something with horses. Oh. A girl usually meets him in a bar and grill downtown. Alex's Place, I think it's called. Mm. 
undoubtedly as sordid as the romance seems to be. <laughs> I don't know why I tell you all this, Daisy, except that I'm sure you can keep a secret as well as I. Oh, you know you can, Mrs. Whitty. You can always be absolutely certain of that. <laughs> Funny how the seventh drink gets smoother after you get the first things down, huh? <laughs> ah, open up a window, huh? It's kind of warm in here. Well, well, I went to that bar and grill called Alex's Place. What a crummy joint. The barkeep pointed Nicky out to me. He was sitting in a corner booth having himself a beer. He was awfully good looking. Not the soft type like Maurice, but a hunk of man you could cotton to if you didn't have business on your mind. He didn't say anything when I sat down opposite him at the table. He just looked at me and smiled. Hello, baby. You're Nicky, aren't you? Nicky Gates. So what? My name's Daisy. You don't say. And I've been looking forward to the pleasure of meeting you. Would you like a drink? Oh, no, I never drink. Oh, well, hardly ever. Yes, I think I'll have a slow gin fizz. Oh, no, uh, change that to a double rye with water. Double rye, Joe. Okay. Now, what's on your mind? I just thought I'd like to make your acquaintance because we got a mutual friend. You don't say. Name's Charlotte. Charlotte Frawley. Remember? How do you know about Charlotte Frawley? Oh, things get around. I also know about her father and what a terrible temper he's got. Keep talking. It'd be awful, wouldn't it, if Mr. Frawley found out about you and his daughter? Would it? He's an ex-policeman and he carries a gun. And his daughter's so young, too. What's the matter, Nicky? Don't you like the older girls? I like them fine. Except when they talk too much. <sighs> well, I'm, I'm just about all talked out. Not yet, you ain't. No? Ain't you got something to ask me? You catch on fast. Yeah, I catch on fast. Well, it wouldn't cost you much, Nicky. You're too cute to take advantage of. Uh, suppose we say, uh, 500. That shouldn't be high for keeping quiet. Suppose we say, nuts, baby. Hmm? Suppose we shift the conversation while you listen to me. Oh, in my arm. Does it bust easy? Don't try to move it. Hey, Look, Daisy, I know a guy who's kind of a plasterer. Only specializes. He puts Gabby Dames in two-ton blocks of cement, then drops them in a drink. But I... And I know another guy, sweetheart, who's got a temper even worse than old man Frawley's. He takes black and skirts and slits their ears off with rusty razor blades. Oh. Then he kicks their teeth out and pushes them through a sewer grate. You know what, baby? What? Both of them guys is me. Well, I guess I made a slight mistake. Yeah, I guess you did. Well... Worked on everyone else. I'll accept a draw with you. Sit where you are, sugar. Well, can I leave? I wouldn't talk, Nicky. I've got more sense. You're a lot tougher than I am. And I know when I met my match. Then you ain't as dumb as I thought. Oh, I get by. In a crummy, chiseling way. Huh? What kind of peanuts do you make at this racket? I bet it ain't enough to buy you lunch. How do you think I got this coat? And this diamond-studded watch? The coat is Persian. Persian is for shopping in a meat market. What's the matter with mink? Nothing. Nothing that I can think of, anyway. You ain't hard to look at. You got a little nerve. Maybe you and I can get together. With your shape and my brain, this racket could pay off. Let me think it over. Oh, uh, get me another double rye, Nicky. This is as good a place as any to think it over. <laughs> Time is the great common denominator. If we wait long enough, it casts us all in the very same pattern. In the end, it leaves us evenly matched. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. For even the murderer is no better off than his victim, as they both lie moldering in their graves. 
Oh, Nicky was a dream boss. He was a doll. I think I fell from the minute I saw him. He had all kinds of lovely ways of making money, like doping race horses and forging checks and collecting graft for what he called protection. But every once in a while, he'd go back to my specialty. Only now it was Nicky who was doing the collecting. Did you see her, Nicky? Sure. How much did you get? Five G's. This dame was a cinch. My goodness, I would have just asked for a thousand. <laughs> you had your mind on peanuts before you met me. Give me. Give me what? My hat. You know, I think we're making a big mistake. How? Splitting 50-50. But I get you the tips, don't I? Sure you do, baby. I'm not cutting you out. Well, then what? <laughs> How about we get married and make the partnership permanent? Oh, Nicky. You like that idea, huh? You know I do. I'm crazy about you, Nicky. I guess you'd found that out. You're a smart kid, Daisy, and you're okay on the eyes. I don't like to mix business with pleasure, but I'll make you an exception. What about all the other women you know, including Charlotte? I'm kissing them off, baby. I ain't seen Charlotte since I met you. I'm through with them all. For good? For good. There's only one thing, Daisy. What? You got to cut down on the lushing. Why, Nicky? You know I hardly ever touch a drop. I'm talking about booze, not water. Well, I've seen guys with cast iron stomachs and wooden legs who couldn't hold as much as you. You not only finish a quarter eye all by yourself... You even try to get your tongue inside the bottle so you can lick the bottom. Now, don't now, exactly. Now, look, baby, I like a drink myself every now and then. But with you, it's different. You talk too much when you guzzle. One of these days, you'll get a skinful and hang the two of us. Oh, the way you carry on. What do you say, baby? Is it a promise? I'd promise anything, Nicky. For you. And I kept my promise, too. I've been on the wagon seven and, well, almost seven, ever since. <laughs> we took our honeymoon in Florida. We had a wonderful time. I really loved him, you know. I loved him so much, I could have died. We just lay on the beach and drank milk out of coconuts. Well, Nicky was just as sweet as he could be. You like it here, baby? It's just divine. That's some bathing suit you got on. Where's the rest of it? It's supposed to be open in the middle. Now, Daisy, if you want to get yourself another swim, you better do it now. We're leaving tonight on the 11.50. Leaving? Why? We're almost broke, that's why. But we had 18000 when we got here, Nicky. I divided it even. Nine at the crab table and nine at roulette. Well, there's lots more where that came from. Sure. Only we've got to get our hands on it now. What do we do, honey? Let's see. The horses ain't running up north, so that's out. Maybe we ought to go back to the permanent waves. <laughs> I wonder if Mrs. Whitty is still around. She'll be there. And if she ain't, there's always another one who likes to gab. Yeah. You think they'll give you a job back? Of course. I'm the best in the business. Well, you better go to town, and this time pick me a real winner. I'm just about right for a fancy haul. And mind you, she's fabulously wealthy, Daisy. She's married to one of the richest men I know. Is she pretty? Simply gorgeous, and she knows it. Oh. Seems incredible to me that a woman in her social position would carry on with another man. What do you have this time, Mrs. Whitty? Oh, you know, I thought I'd try a page boy. All right. You uh, don't think it's a little too youngish for me, do you? You're just the type. Uh -huh. Where was I, Daisy? You were telling me about your friend. Oh, yes. Well, it's scandalous. Simply scandalous. Of course, I'll admit she's a lot younger than her husband is, but that's no excuse for carrying on. Is she as young as me? Well, I'd say a little younger, Daisy, and as charming a woman as you could find. Every man she meets falls madly in love with her, and this time she's probably fallen in love herself. For this other guy? Mm-hmm. How long has she known him, Mrs. Whitty? Several weeks, I believe, and they're crazy about each other. The man is married, too, but I guess that doesn't mean any more to him than it does to her. Anyway, they'll both probably try to get a divorce. Really? 
She's trying to find a way to get it, though, and still keep most of her husband's money. She'd die if she realized how much I knew. But, of course, she's a very good friend of mine, and I'd never tell a soul. Uh, outside of you, of course. <laughs> but then I uh, always tell you everything. Don't I, Daisy? <laughs> yes, Mrs. Weddy. Always. Anything new, baby? Mrs. Witty was in today. Oh, reliable. Any dope? There's a woman she told me about who can buy and sell all the rest of them put together, Nikki. I'll bet she's good for at least 50 grand. Married? Natch. <laughs> With a boyfriend on the side, huh? They're crazy about each other. You got a name? Hazel Beaton. Uh, she's got a house up in Westchester someplace. This sounds like something I can handle, honey. Why don't you no, just... No, no, no. I'll go myself. I hate it when you take all the chances. I'll go, and that's final. All right. When? As soon as the coast is clear. Well, it's clear now, Nicky. Her husband's uh, uh, gone on a business trip. I'll go tonight. What time? About nine. You're taking a movie, Daisy. You'll leave it to me. Goodness, but this liquor is strong. Oh, you think they're putting in more alcohol than they used to? Hmm? Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, as I was saying, Nikki went up to see Hazel Beaton at nine. And I showed up 15 minutes later. I already saw the movie they had in the neighborhood, and besides, I wanted to hear just how my loving papa was making out. The house was quiet when I got there. There wasn't a light on in the place. When I rang a bell, it was Nicky who answered the door. Nicky. I saw you coming up the walk. Get inside the house quick. Is Mrs. Beaton here? Yeah. She's here, all right. Come inside and have a look. It's so dark. Don't reach for the lights. Strike a match. Is that Mrs. Beaton? Yeah. What's she doing on the floor? She's dead, baby. Dead? Somebody put a bullet in her head. Oh, Nick. Wasn't me. It's all right, honey. You know I'll stick. It wasn't me, I tell you. She was laying there when I walked in. I think we better get out of here, Nicky. I think so, too. I came up by train. Did you bring the car? Yeah, it's parked outside. No, don't go that way. We'll leave the joint through the rear. Want a cigarette, baby? Mm hmm. Right hand pocket. Might be one, too. Stop worrying, Nikki. Nobody will ever even know we were over there. What did she do? Start a fuss and say she'd yell for the police? I didn't do it, Daisy. I told you twice. Oh. Then maybe it was her husband. Maybe he came back to town. It wasn't her husband either. How do you know, honey? Because I know. Daisy? Yeah? How was the picture? The picture? Didn't you take in a movie tonight? Oh, sure. You like it? Oh, that Van Johnson was in it. You know how I go for him. Yeah, I know. After the picture, you came right up here. Huh? Uh-huh. What for? Because I was worried. About what? You. Don't hand me that. What's the matter, Nicky? You sound awful sore. You didn't go to no movie, baby. You came up here instead. I did? You got into that house ahead of me and you bumped her off. Why, Nicky? How can you say a thing like that? Don't lie, Daisy. It won't do you any good. No. You're just as dumb about murder toots as you are about everything else. I told you to lay off and leave everything to me. You put a slug in Hazel Beaton's skull, baby. And you practically left the cops your signature. He held up his hand and showed me what he picked up near the body. It was one of my earrings. A set he gave me himself. It must have fallen off. You just couldn't put anything over on my Nicky. Well, what do you got to say for yourself? I guess there's nothing left to say. Why didn't you let me handle this my own way? Oh, I don't know. I just got the urge myself. Nah. You got to get out of town, Daisy. Why? Because it'll be too hot for you to hang around. But who'll give me away? That witty dame. Oh, her. I forgot about her. The cops are questioning her for clues, and she'll remember she told you all about the woman. You think maybe you can stand up to a 24-hour grilling when they start putting you under the lights? Well, I go, Nick. Chicago. You can catch a train tonight. 
I'll drive you back to the flat and you pack some clothes. And I'll meet you later on. All right. Hey, what happened to this car? What's the matter? I don't know. You know what I think, Nicky? What? Your ignition key is off. Well, how did... I turned it, honey. That's how. So leave it as it is. What's the idea of the gun, Daisy? It's a nice one, isn't it, Nicky? The handle's silver-plated. Worked fine on Mrs. Beaton. Now I'm going to test it out on you. Wait a minute, baby. I can't afford to take any chances, Nicky. I just got a feeling that you'll give me away. I wouldn't do that, Daisy. It was a lovely wedding, Nicky. And the honeymoon was just grand. But you know what they say about honeymoons. Sooner or later, they all got to end. Daisy! Bye, Nicky. Remember to give my regards to Hazel Beaton. Well, that's all there was to it, Lieutenant. I left him lying in the car. And when I got back to my flat to pack, I, I found you here. I should have known. I should have figured he tipped you off from Hazel's house. He was such a handsome, double-crossing stinker. What chance has a girl to outsmart a guy like that? <laughs> huh? Oh, why did I kill him? Oh, didn't I say? Well, it just happened that I listened in once too many to Mrs. Whitty. You see, the guy who Hazel Beaton was fooling with was Nicky Gates. Yeah. He met her in Florida, and she followed him home. Oh, you didn't have to use those handcuffs on me, Lieutenant. I won't give you any trouble at all. Oh, but before we go, there's still one drink left in the bottle. Not that I can't take a drink or leave it. But when they give me the chair, I'll be a long time dry. <laughs> well, here's to Nicky. The way he always hit it on the nose. He used to tell me I talked too much when I had a skin fall. And I guess I do. At that. There is no memory which time does not erase and no pain which death does not end. And there is no crime which is not marked, sooner or later, paid in full. The clock will be heard again next week, same time, same ABC stations. This program was written by Lawrence Clee, directed by Clark Andrews. Music is under the direction of Glenn Osser. Heard on tonight's program were Alice Frost as Daisy, Joe DeSantis as Nikki. Listen again next week, same time, for The Clock. Here is a special program note. Coming up next, comedy on the Willie Piper Show. Stay tuned for laughs as Willie's father-in-law convinces Willie that he's growing bald. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.